Typically, I mean, we do research on streams and rivers uh, in the past in these minimally disturbed forest areas, um, and we think of those as, as, na as natural. But uh, these are kind of the everyday ecosystems that we see on a daily basis. I think that people are unaware of, of the problems. I mean, when they're walking on pavement, parking lot, and um, they, you know, inadvertently throw a piece of trash, or uh, people are changing their oil and put it, put it down the, the storm drain, they don't know where it ends up. It just magically seems to disappear. When I was here about a year, a year ago, uh, looking for some stuff, basically this, uh, it looks like an old motorcycle, uh, was further upstream. And so basically it's migrating its way down with these different uh, rain events. So you can imagine that if, uh, if you see something like this uh, carried by rainwater, I mean, think of all the things that are dissolved that are in the water um, and uh, all those things that are transported with even smaller flows. I actually began my uh, interest in streams and rivers when I was probably seven, eight years old. And um, I grew up in, in a, a rural area of Tennessee and um, we had a stream running through our property. My father died at a young age and so uh, one thing is that I found a lot of comfort from being outdoors um, and um, being in the stream and I had a sister and one of our first projects actually was basically seeing where the, um, the stream that ran through our property where it originated from. We walked on a summer day. Uh, we started off in the morning, kept walking further and further up. We passed all these houses actually, uh, some with septic systems, and finally got into these areas where we saw these seeps coming out of the, uh, of the groundwater, and that's where the stream came from. I mean, basically that water is a reflection of all the the, the bad water quality things that we do on the landscape, uh, when you look in that water, you can see a reflection of, 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 of what we've done. And that's amazing to me. I met my wife, actually. Uh, our first date was a hike along the Patapsco River, which is um, uh, it's a downstream uh, tributary that the streams that we were working on drain into. And so um, I and I still own a house not too far from here that we rent out uh, that we first lived in uh, when uh, we moved to Maryland. So those streams are very close to me in terms of they help me meet my wife. Um, uh, in the headwaters they provide drinking water uh, for us. These types of streams are everywhere. They're kind of like the dirty little secret of every uh, you know suburban, urban area. All that runoff from roadways parking lots, comes in through here, uh, gets washed further down, and uh, you know this water contains road salt as well. So I do, I do try to get out in the field uh, sometimes, but the sites I go to uh, more and more are not just the urban streams, but they're more stormwater sites um, that, I, that I work at, because I think that stormwater and how we treat stormwater is at the root of some of these problems. It's, it's a very different experience when you're sampling the stream and you're on land and you're walking up and down it um, to where it starts out and, and, uh, and seeing what changes happen along it. It's, a very, it's also a very beautiful experience being on a boat, uh, which I like to do with some of our river work, and seeing that same stream from the water to the land. Benjamin Franklin said, once said, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so we need to be very careful about where we develop. Um, and right now uh, we have natural lands, but as these um, sur suburbs increase and we increase the habitat of automobiles and all of that, basically it's going to lead to more and more uh, pollution of road salt and other contaminants.